Welcome back my people. Before I start my video, I always appreciate the support you are giving me as a family. And if it were not for you, I could not have been where I am today. So, let's continue subscribing, liking and sharing and supporting this channel so that it might grow to greater heights and I, I do appreciate for the support you have given me so far. We are done with our previous topic about hemorrhoids and now we are going to start another important topic which most especially ladies have been asking about and this is what we call puperosepsis. Pupero Sepsis. What is puperosepsis? According to World Health Organization, according to World Health Organization, puperosepsis is defined as infection, get this clearly, infection of the genital tract occurring at labor, that is during delivery, all within 42 days of postpartum period. Postpartum period is the period that follows delivery. Post means you have delivered. So that period after delivery is what we call postpartum period or puperium. That's where the name pupero comes from. And sepsis simply means an infection. And in a, if we put it together, it becomes puperosepsis. Another definition. Puperosepsis or infection occur when bacteria infect uterus and surrounding areas after a female gives birth, also called postpartum infection. So you can call it puperosepsis, you can call it postpartum infection. So, what are the principles of management of puperosepsis? Or when you get a client as an healthcare provider, how will you manage a client having this kind of a disease? What are the main steps you should follow for a better management? Number one, admit the patient. That means you put the patient in the ward. Number two, start oral fluids. Number three, do blood, uh, take blood and urine samples for a routine microscop microscopic examination to rule out the cause of this infection. Number four, put the patient all start antibiotics. Number five, rule out presence of retained blood clots. Since the patient may, may, might still be bleeding, make sure that the uterus is well contracted and there is no remains of conception. Now, number seven, monitor vital signs every two hours. These include temperature, pulse rate, blood pressure. At least after every two hours. Next point, watch the patient for 24 hours. All the patient should remain under the custody of the hospital for close monitoring for 24 hours. So, what are the types of puperosepsis? We have three types of puperosepsis. And the three types, it depends. Each one depends on where it is or which part is affected. So, postpartum infections are described by the three distinct areas where they may occur. Number one, all A, we have 
endometritis. And we discussed this before. This is simply inf inflammation of the endometrium or the inner lining of the uterus, which is called the endometrium. So, this involves the uterine lining. Number two, we have myometritis. This affects my the myometrium or the uterine muscle. Number three, we have parametritis. Parametritis also called pelvic cellulitis and it affects the supporting tissue around the uterus. I hope you get the three types of uh, endometri of uh, sorry of uh, puperosepsis or pupero infections. I point to note the most common type of puperosepsis, the most common type of puperosepsis or infection is endometritis, since the lining of the uterus can undergo trauma or injury and tears during birthing process. And this might involve what we call an episiotomy, it might involve a tear or a laceration. So these openings may be it a tear, may be a, 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 a episiotomy. This damage provides or this opening provides entrance for infection or bacteria to develop. So it gives way for the bacteria to enter the skin and then they start multiplying or developing. Infection in uterus muscle of the structures supporting uterus may form at incision or tear sites, incision or tear sites such as in an episiotum or caesarean section delivery. This means also during a caesarean section, the opening or the incision site can provide way for bacteria into the system and then it leads to the development of sepsis or infection. What are the symptoms of puperosepsis or postpartum infection? So, these are the, just the general signs of postpartum infection, like in a typical infection. This means they are more or less the same as the other typical infections. And these include fever, which refers to, refers to the hotness or coldness of the body, which might be high grade or low grade. We have chills and body aches. We have loss of, loss, loss of appetite. Uh, we have um, overall discomfort. Yeah, we, and also we have what we call nausea and vomiting. Obviously, where there is an infection, there might be nausea and vomiting. I point to note, or you have to note this, severe symptoms, or more severe symptoms, specific to a postpartum infection, include the following. Severe or serious symptoms, specific to a postpartum infection include the following. Number one, pain below the waist or in pelvic bone caused by inflammation of the uterus. Obviously, when the, the, the uterus is attacked by the infection, it has to respond by inflaming or swelling. This exerts pressure to the nerves and leads to the pain below the waist or pelvic bone. Number two, we have what we call pale, clammy skin. Pale, clammy skin released, uh, re re released to large count of blood loss or cost or related to large uh, amount of blood loss. Number three, we have full smelly vaginal discharge, full smell vaginal discharge or 
drainage revealing an infection. Number four, we have increased heart rate and this is due to high blood loss. This marks the end of our video today and I hope tomorrow we will continue with this same uh, topic. So guys, let's continue subscribing, let's continue liking our videos and sharing so that they may reach the whole world at large. Thank you for the support you have showed me and continue keeping the support on. Let's meet in the next video.